Jervis reached a halfway point in his almost single-handed conquest of Shikoku, with no evidence arising that there was any way to stop him. From the mainland, George Hook departed with his army to follow behind Jos Arten on a mission in the east, where reports of French activity made the chance to find and destroy the Japanese military headquarters in the area all the more alluring. Large-scale battles continued near Kyoto, with the army of Japanese volunteers under Lawrence standing side by side with British troops under Dorian Cartwright to eke out a victory in a weeks-long struggle for Hakone province. It's already high noon. You have so much energy in you, Charlie. With all these businessmen flocking me at every turn, there has been little time for exercise recently. How charming that you choose to exercise with little old me. Choose? Not such a fitting word. Oh, don't be like that, darling. I know you were hoping for some pretty Japanese flower. You know that, do you? I have eyes, darling, and I've seen what you be doing with yours every time they're in there serving the gentlemen their vittles. You are most likely mistaken. Oh, Charlie. I'll be good for you, Charlie. Those businessmen and whatnot, they're the small fry. They'll be cooked up and served out for the real men of the world to enjoy. What on God's earth are you talking about, Miss Westerman? I'm talking about the real power behind the throne you're laboring over. They won't believe in this fresh little land alone, no siree. I'm in no mood for politics. I'm getting up. Wait, one last thing. What's with you being all Ms. Westerman at me? Ain't you gonna call me Cow Chan like I told you? I'm leaving! I'm leaving! Please, let go! I won't ask again. Please, I'm already late! Stop it! Hey! Oh, Cow Chan! Hello there and welcome back to Honourable Gentlemen. We've just had a battle against the Kuwana where we won using the easy tactic of just standing around and hoping we'd kill all the enemies since we had a castle on our side and that was the end of that but we will be coming back to that castle a bit later. Now we've got John Alcock clearing up some business that I started last time. I wanted to get rid of this Wakayama castle to make our front line much much neater because it's sort of in the middle of our territory right now. I just overwhelmed it with everything I had standing around nearby and I'm going to make a vassal here, the Sioux no less, in honour of my previous Fall of the Samurai campaign. I'm sure the Sioux will want to join the winning side here and will be a loyal vassal. So now I can spread these armies out to defend this general area. One thing I would like to do is defeat that army which you can see is walking towards Kyoto. It actually didn't do anything in the previous turn so they've missed an opportunity and now we'll start pursuing them. Now, I did already say that George Hook had left on his mission to go to the east, but actually he's going to leave right now. I originally intended for him to get on that ship that's in the port and sail to join the fleet, but because one enemy ship blockaded my port, I ended up bringing the fleet over and then leaving, so we're doing this the slightly slow way, but it's fine overall. Now he'll have to chase after Joss Arton. Joss is right here, who will now be sailing down the trade route towards the eastern provinces, and on the way we can fight various naval battles. There are all sorts of navies attacking us, with just one ship attacking the trade route, that is. And I think that when you attack a navy that only has one unit in it, the AI is scripted to never run away. So even though it should just leave in these situations, it's letting us defeat them. And I think that's just a nice little thing put in there to make chasing down single ships less annoying. This is Dorian and Lorenz now. We've just defeated a Kanazawa army that was hanging about near Hikone Province's castle, Otsu I think it's called. And we've just generally cleared up that situation. There are still enemies in the area, but after a couple of turns they'll be all healed up and that will look good. Charles, who just recently took the Noto Peninsula, had to double back on himself to also fight a Kanazawa army, I believe that is, that was walking past our forces and might have snuck past our front line if we didn't go after it now, but we got it and overwhelmed it. 
Jervis is on his way forwards as usual, and in this case I just blindly attacked a castle, found that there was an enemy army there but it's standing outside, and therefore I could use a knight attack to just take the castle for free and not have to bother fighting the army right now. Doesn't mean we don't have to fight it at all, it's still there and <laughs> might still try to stop us, but that's just a bit of progress in the bank. Now a sneaky move from the Wakayama. My previous claims that these provinces, like Sakai, are defended from the south by those mountains isn't actually accurate, I think, because you can go just along the edge of the map in a fully hidden position and then appear next to Sakai port, which is what that army did, and then took it as we saw. So now that's a bit of a problem we'll have to deal with. Now, back to the place where we skipped over the battle really earlier on, for another battle that's the same thing but harder. We're being attacked by two armies, we've still got most of our units inside the castle ready to fight, but because it's only a level 1 castle, the fact the enemy have so many troops might be enough to just overwhelm us because they could attack from all sorts of different directions and just swamp us before we can shoot much. Luckily, they all attacked from mostly the same direction, so I can set my men up facing the west and the north and have the maximum possible number of guns facing the enemy as they come over the walls to hopefully improve the chances of our standard issue strategy working. We've got the levied units out there trying to distract the enemy while our regular units behind get shooting. The effectiveness of this kind of depends on how long the levies last for, and in this case they're not going to last very long because the enemy's melee units are coming in and just absolutely annihilating them, they're Tetsubo ninjas making short work of our spear levy, and here at Shogatai are just going to annihilate our ranged levy troops for sure. So very soon we are just going to be swamped and it's going to be up to, in many cases, our riflemen fighting in melee to try and win the bulk of this battle. I take full responsibility. I never should have sent you out there with the volunteers. Charles was swearing by them, and I must say I was taken in, and I am ashamed. There is no shame in trusting your son, John. He wasn't entirely wrong. Sometimes battles are simply tough. Not in Japan. This is a conquest that continues on the basis that it will be easy throughout. If London hears of the numbers of British dead before we're done, then we'll all be replaced, if not asked to bloody give it all back and go home. Such events should be prepared for, I believe. Reports bound for London are likely on their way to telegraph stations on the mainland as I speak. Based on their lack of action so far, I think there's no reason to believe they are monitoring us that closely. In the past, perhaps? But a new arrival might have orchestrated a change there. You mean to accuse Major Jervis of being literate? No, I mean to accuse one Cal Westerman of being in the service of the lords and ministers you so fear. Ms. Westerman is in no one's service, I assure you of that. That's part of her charm, of course. Her royal connections are in her blood, not her bearing. Is that so? Perhaps my concerns are misplaced, then. We have time, rest assured. We must end this war, clean the place up, and put on a smile for when some gaggle of marshals arrives with telescopic monocles and forged requisition orders. Things didn't go to plan because the enemy were able to just swarm our men and prevent them from firing all that much. Our guys on the western part of the castle had more luck and were better able to keep the enemy at bay. And it actually went even better on the west side than we see here because the replay doesn't completely show the battle. It was in reality not as bad as it looks here, but it was pretty much as bad, so we're just using this footage anyway. You can see the enemy are swarming over the capture point, and the only reason they haven't taken it already is because one guy has their foot on it somewhere from our side. But soon we'll take more casualties, and that won't be the case, and then... It's just impossible to push the enemy back off the capture point because they have much more weight on their side. So here we are a minute later, after a load more grinding, our surviving troops are just holding out for a surrender, a costly enemy victory. We killed absolutely loads of the enemy on the way in, but we lost everything on our own side, and indeed we lost the castle. A valiant defeat that eventually ends up being classified as... 
the casualties done to the enemy are somewhat unknown in reality because when you lose a battle the enemy will replenish troops afterwards so in theory you could not have killed anyone on the enemy side if you didn't kill any full units so kind of annoying we'll see what happens after they've broken through there there was another battle this turn that I'm going to auto resolve a samurai revolt was stirred up we had a small advantage, I thought let's just auto resolve it because it would be too easy and boring to fight manually. And it actually went quite badly in the auto resolve, only a Pyrrhic victory with many units lost. So we kept the castle but we've certainly been weakened there and since it was a rebel army, our enemies as a whole haven't been weakened by that loss so that's a shame. Things are looking quite messy in this area now, but reinforcements will start to arrive since we've finished up over in Eager. I'm going to bring down this stack to hang out near the castle and just wait to see what happens because I don't want to go on an offensive there right now. Just want to see what the enemy are going to do, maybe wait for a weakness to emerge. I've also got a reserve stack back here that I'll start bringing into this theatre to plug up the gaps that are emerging. I decided I might as well advance a little bit more up here near Noto since the next castle over is sort of choke pointing our front line so we'll take that one as well before we try and finalize something stable up here. Some reserve troops there go and push the Tiyama back into their castle, now we'll just wait and next turn go and start a siege or something. Over on Shikoku we've got our first attack that's actually being not done by Jervis, my reserve army which is now following behind him is going to take care of this Yamauchi army which took down our vassal in the area. We'll just leave them under siege for now, no pressure to actually get on with that. As for Jervis I'm going to skip over this battle by auto resolving, this is the army we skipped earlier with a night battle, this time I'll just auto resolve them to death. We got another Pyrrhic victory, getting lots of bad auto resolves these days and we lost our Royal Engineers, which is a shame because they're a nice utility unit since they outrange so many things. Still, all the other losses are irrelevant because they'll just come back in a couple of turns and we'll just wander around getting into position for our next attack until such a time comes. The Yamuchi can't really counterattack us right now because we've killed so many of their armies recently, so we are safe to be weak. The Wakayama, who I'm pursuing away from Kyoto, managed to get the drop on me. They escaped my men that I had going after them previously and have now managed to get to a castle that's not heavily defended enough to easily defeat them. I think if I manually resolved that fight it would be possible to win, but this is one of these situations that comes up in Total War and is sort of detectable when you're a real veteran, where it's faster to lose and then just win again in the future. So I just gave them the castle and we'll just take it back for free in a couple of turns time or something. Now the Shiyama tried to attack the reserve army I was sending towards them. Bad move, they lost everything, meaning now we can just go take their castle. The only issue is that Charles has lost all his movement points, seems his army has been sabotaged. Send round for the men to assemble. Reports say we've won a skirmish to the south. If we march quickly there should be a castle we can take with minimal work. Glad to hear it, sir. Just one problem though, sir. <laughs> That's being? I, you're uh, a little bit embarrassing to say, sir. Say it at once. I've had enough of my time wasted today. Oh, uh, well, you see, there was a strange fellow at that inn down by the stream. He got to gaming with the petty officers. Dice games, it were. Easy stuff, you'd think. But there was a little mishap with the proceedings, with a fair dose of the Jap Glug, you understand, and uh, suffice to say, uh, to put it bluntly, uh, what's the problem? All the NCOs have had their trousers nicked, sir. Nicked? Well, uh, gambled away as it was actually, sir. <laughs> right. Summon the military, please. I'll visit the weaving girls to see about replacements. We took back some of the territory we lost recently and then went back on the offensive. The siege on Shikoku was resolved because most of the defenders died during the siege, allowing us to take the castle with ease. George and Joss are continuing their trip to the east, however some news comes in that France has been destroyed, that means the French colonies set up to the east that I was looking to sneakily get rid of have now been destroyed by the Japanese themselves, or at least are occupied by the Japanese. We'll take a look later on and try and find out where they were, I know they're somewhere around that province there, Kazusa, and that's also where we need to go to land near Musashi, where Edo is, so it will still be our destination 
and we'll try and work out what happened to them. Before that, more battle action, because for the third time, this castle here at Yanagase gets attacked, and this time Dorian is on the inside to defend. The issue we have is that this battle looks very much like the one we just lost at this castle, only this time Dorian's inside, so the stakes are a bit higher than before. The main difference we have here is in the composition of the army. This force is about half cavalry, so all of those guys need to go out of the castle, leaving only about half a stack on the inside. We've got artillery as well, but it's not all that useful thanks to its glitchy firing style, just missing the enemy there as they gradually walk towards us. So we'll use what infantry we have to form an incomplete box ready to do the standard defensive strategy. Our men outside the castle are going to prove very useful throughout the fight. They can do things like this, kiting enemies away from the castle and then actually just destroying them because things like these dragoons have no problem kiting the enemy's melee infantry around and killing them since they can move and fire. We'll just leave them to it then, we'll weaken the enemy's assault unit by unit. Out here, the artillery proved themselves useful at last by getting a lucky hit on the enemy commander who was among these cavalry. It doesn't tell you when the commander's dead, but you can see the aura on the minimap disappears when you kill them. So we got the kill there, that will lessen enemy morale. Now the attack is beginning and the enemy's ninjas have a nice time getting to my line because even though we're firing quite a lot at them, it doesn't seem to be inflicting much damage. I think our troops might have been focusing on one or two specific guys coming over the wall so the crowd of enemies actually gets in there and now we've got Tetsubos in amongst our rifle troops and we've seen before that goes particularly poorly. Some enemy Yari Cav found our Dragoons, that means we're just going to have to run away because we can't face them since they are anti-Cav Cav. Our own anti-Cav Cav were just raiding over here, we killed some matchlock troops. But now I'll bring them back around to support our Dragoons and try to take out enemy Cav, especially now that some of the enemy units there are kiting onto my Cav so we'll just run away from the castle. I've left my levies garrisoned on the wall in order to attract this grenade fire. They are just a sacrifice to all of these grenade throwing units. But at least it's keeping it all away from our big blocky positions further back. I think that is a good use of the levies who are otherwise not too useful. Now the main part of the fighting will begin. It's another case where we just have to pray things work out for all intents and purposes. We can't really move or do anything fancy here. It's up to our men to happen to kill enough enemies to rout them before the melees get really bad for us, since we're going to have melee disadvantage all over the place. One thing that will help us out is the fact many of our rifle troops are rank 5 or above, which actually gives them quite high melee stats, relatively speaking. So at least against enemy ranged troops, we'll do really well, and we'll stand our ground for some time against the enemy's melee units. Outside the castle things went well, we took out the enemy cavalry harassing our dragoons and then the dragoons can go back to just trolling enemy infantry units and easily destroying them. Things are getting very messy on the inside and part of the mess is because this replay isn't actually completely faithful to the battle itself. So this unit of sepoys here that's standing in an awkward position just fighting everything as it comes through the gate, I think that unit wasn't actually there in the regular fight. We're also seeing that the capture point is about to fall, we've got very little actually standing in front of it, and in reality the enemy pressure there wasn't quite so great and we were holding on a bit better. Our cavalry are done outside the castle, so they'll now be starting to make their way back to support us. The men guarding the capture point come under grenade attack and things generally aren't looking very good right here. The enemy are breaking through and we'll see the enemy even get Dorian into melee. That didn't actually happen in the battle. As I said, our capture point was more heavily defended than this. I think the enemy distributed their units in a slightly different way in reality. So we were able to hold on to the capture point while also still losing pretty much all of our men as portrayed here. The enemy too are taking extreme losses. You can see them just pouring through the gate and being gunned down. We have lots of units still alive here and I think some of these units will have actually been killed whereas others on the capture point were still alive in reality. 
The battle was decided after the return of our cavalry. They could finally relieve the infantry and just clear up the mess inside the castle to eventually give us a win, although in this replay we lose because the enemy had the capture point. Here's what it looks like in reality. Things a bit nicer, we still controlled the capture point and the enemy had their units more to the right from our perspective here, not so much focusing on that area. So our dragoons come in, shoot everything up and some other cavalry units dealt with things that were still outside and we end the fight with a heroic victory, still losing virtually everything, at least when it comes to our infantry. The infantry portion of the army is wrecked, meaning the army's sort of useless now. This composition we're left with isn't very safe to use, so we will have to refit this army before it can go into battle properly once again, but at least the enemy were also heavily depleted. Dear Mr. Broadhurst, you've been quite patient with me, and for that I thank you. Finally, I can confirm the arrangements made for the foreseeable future. General Alcock will take my place as company director while I am behind enemy lines, so please feel no hesitation to ask him for guidance on any matters that arise. He is no expert on tea, far from it, but he knows a thing or two about the logistics of a business built on military spoils, I assure you. He will secure the legal right we have to the captured plantations and equipment. That will allow us to write off all our costs onto the military budget. Apparently, he's been doing that for all sorts of things this whole time. I need not explain the mathematics of how advantageous this will be to the damaging of foreign competition. And indeed, I won't bore you with the full lecture of how it is best to speak nothing of this arrangement until the General gives the all clear. Joss, at the end of his long voyage, finally arrives at the area of operations for our behind enemy lines plan. When we get here, we discover a couple of settlements that have a 100% pro-France sentiment, so clearly this is where the French were dug in but have just recently been defeated. We can swoop in here then and potentially create France as a vassal using those settlements in order to make this whole campaign a bit more glorious for the Empire as a whole and help us justify it to those who might question why the British have now taken so many casualties trying to conquer this not particularly famous island on the other side of the world. Anyway, as for Joss, we're going to try and land in the area. I messed this up a little bit actually. I land the troops, but the fleet ends up in an attrition zone because the coast guns are firing at them. I could have just split a couple of ships off from the fleet and destroyed the coast guns, but because we can't do two actions a turn with the rest of the ships, we are just screwed. We're going to have to just take fire and the ships will all now be heavily damaged at the start of the next turn. Anyway, now I'm jumping over to Shikoku to show you this move, just moving some reinforcements through this forest here. Ordinarily not an important move to show, but it will come back and come in very useful in a minute. Over with Charles's battlefront, I decided to advance some more. I keep saying I'm going to stop here because really there's no tactical advantage to continuing to push on this particular front. We don't need any of this territory and there's nothing strategic about taking it. The opportunities were just always there, <laughs> so I keep advancing up a little bit. Don't know if I'll go much further than this because it will start to become strategically bad to overextend myself in that direction. But. We'll see what we can do. Now here's the reason that setup in the forest comes in useful. The Yamauchi were also going to move through that forest to bypass Jervis and attack the southern side of the island. And now we can ambush them. This battle gets started really quickly because we deploy in range of the enemy. So we're instantly firing. The game doesn't even bother loading half the sound effects because it happens so quickly apparently. And now it's just going to be a shooting match. We don't have an overwhelming advantage. The enemy have quite a lot of troops and as we're shooting at each other we're going to take significant losses unit to unit we don't have a particular advantage the things that will work in our advantage overall will be the fact that the enemy took the first volley so they're slightly depleted and the ai likes to move its units around and reposition them even during firefights so their fire rate is much lower than it could be as a result and indeed, we do win the battle, especially because the enemy's morale is low, so we don't have to kill that much in each unit to make them rout. And soon the entire army is routing. There we have it, a very rapid battle where we took out 
pretty much a whole army. Good stuff, and the losses on our side were relatively minor. This army of ours is still in an attrition zone, which sucks, but aside from that, this has been a good move. The survivors from the enemy force will have to move north, and then we can just go and hunt them down with Jervis in the near future. Now, finally for this episode, we're going to move on to another ambush, as it turns out. I have reinforced Dorian's position and now have plenty of men here, so I started pursuing the Kuwana forces who were hanging around nearby. It's mostly just survivors, they kept running away, but I noticed in this case I can drop this artillery piece to catch up with one of the groups. However, there was actually a full stack of enemy troops in this forest that I was being led into, and now Dorian, with only his very small and battered army, is being ambushed. It's the reverse of the situation we just saw, where heavily outnumbered and the strategic situation will be bad because we're just going to get shot immediately and our army composition isn't very good. So I hope you'll join me next time to see how that one plays out. Thank you for watching, and very special thanks to all of the officially Devon patrons. We'll finally be going into my endgame plan to campaign through the French area of the map and go on to take Edda, which is our victory objective, starting next time on Honourable Gentlemen.